Okay, so number 10 on the list. This boss is loved by many, and I get why. It has an awesome intro, it's been built up from the moment that he stepped into Shulva, but once again, it's our opinion and we're YouTube famous, so we're right, you're just wrong. It's painfully obvious that this boss was intended to just be a Calamite ripoff, which is fine. In theory, Calamite was great and we enjoyed the throwbacks to Dark Souls 1 and the rest of Dark Souls 2, but this guy's only a ripoff in appearance. Instead of copying what made Calamite actually good, his challenge, the actual boss itself, they just copy his looks, which gets you hyped for a really great fight, but instead all the boss serves to do is challenge your fucking patience and every fight just ends up something a bit like this. <laughs> Final boss hype? No, not really. I am the hype! Hours of difficulty, questing through the lands of Drangliak, defeating huge beasts, traversing mountains! Overcoming odds that even Jackie Chan himself in a ladder factory full of jackets after saying he no want no trouble could survive. Come to this, the final encounter, the ultimate battle, the fight which decides the fate of Drangliek. And what do you get? I'll tell you what you fucking get. But first, a flashback. After what seemed like months of endless difficulty through the lands of Boletaria, you got to the corrupt king, the source of all evil that plagued the lands, and you, the slayer of demons, had your ultimate battle atop a castle guarded by a dragon with a view over the entire kingdom. And let's look at a different time, a different place where there was but one chosen undead who paved their way through Lord Ran. Fighting beasts in the city of gods, defeating endless foes and powerful demons before making it through the last of the great lord's army to decide the fate of the entire world. And now, bearer of the curse, we get to today. A boss about as disappointing as the third Matrix movie and about as exciting as filling out tax returns. A boss born from a shard of Manus. Remember him, the insanely aggressive pinnacle of the Dark Souls 1 DLC? Well good news, this is awful, just like most bosses B team got to design. This one's pretty shit too. So not only is this a shit boss, it has lower defences than the Smelter Demon, attacks that are easy to dodge, 
and it does very little damage in the way of final boss material. The hardest part of this boss is simply resisting the urge to curl up into a ball and cry into your controller in disappointment. Final boss guys, final boss. So here we are, finally made it to Drang Lake Castle, fought through a small army, ran up so many steps that even Rocky would need to play Eye of the Tiger twice to traverse it. You come to the queen of the fucking lands and before you stands a huge archway, a fog gate as big as no other, the rain pouring down only drowned out by the thunderstorm above. You step into the fog, heart racing, hands trembling, anus throbbing. You step through and you're presented with two health bars. Wait, 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 wait. Huge castle, royalty nearby, two health bars. Yes, can it be Onstein and Smo redone? And then we get a closer look as the titles appear above the health bars, Dragon Rider and, and, Dragon Rider again. So just look at what you've went through to get here. A cleaver wielding mass of corpse and flesh. An ancient warrior imprisoned of their own will for being too powerful. A monolithic spider with a laser cannon for an arse and a smelter demon. This is what you worked for. Are you happy now? Guys, 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 guys. I've, I've got a plan. Let's take the worst aspect of PvP and make it a boss! No, God! No, God, please, no! But you did! You just had to go and run another DLC by putting in about as much effort as it takes to start an argument on 4chan. So, you know how a lot of you hate gankers in Dark Souls 2? Go on. Now you can fight three NPCs! Oh, no! All of the fun of getting ganked with none of the fun of sending hate mail afterwards! At the very least, this boss is challenging, but it's the sheer lack of effort, lack of imagination, lack of anything resembling the old FromSoft that made Dark Souls 1 that ruins it. I'm almost certain that they use this boss as a way to blackmail Miyazaki. Do what we want, or you fight it again! How do FromSoft reward the bearer of the cuss? A fucking flower skirt! Now, I'm fine with dressing in women's clothes, but this is just dog shit! A reward that can only equal the boss. Where, where's the boss? I, I don't know, where, where is the boss? I mean, it's... There it is! There, there it is! So, where do we begin with this boss? Start off with, it has melee attacks that even a dead horse could dodge. But yeah, they hit us with another Dragon God rip-off, a gimmick boss in the lava-filled area. <laughs> Something that every Dark Souls veteran called upon entering the Iron Keep. We all knew that there would be a boss so undeniably cheap and simple to defeat. And guess what? We were correct. Every attack this boss does has knockback. Knockback! Because we all love getting knocked into the hole in the floor. Love it! But yeah, the boss is actually designed to knock you into the lava surrounding the island as well as the random fucking hole in the middle of it. It positions itself so that you are between it and the hole 
just behind you. So like the most difficult part of this boss is purely avoiding the crap attacks to stop yourself falling into another cheap and pointless death because once again, guess what guys, there's a bonfire two fucking minutes away. And let's not forget that the boss you took on prior to this is actually far tougher, far more intense than this shit heap. Smelter Demon should have been the real Old Iron King. Let's face it guys, this just wouldn't be a good list without the covetous demon being in here at some point. The area surrounding the boss is pretty dull and boring as well. And we really got to question the design of this boss. Who greenlighted it? Who looked at this and went, YES! THIS IS DARK SOULS 2! I mean, the most interesting aspect about this boss is that it even exists in the first place. It's as if the directors told them to design a boss that is memorable, but don't get too crazy, and they took it with the most literal of meaning and made this slimy turd stick. So this boss has one interesting attack that is done once in the 25 fights that we've encountered this slug shit jab of the hut ripoff. It actually does this, by the way. Many of you have never seen this attack, but alas, it does exist whenever the RN Jesus makes it happen. And in the true style of every not a boss boss, later on in the game you fight another one, this time resembling a dried up dog shit. Okay, so the first thing I want to stress about this, like this one, is that the area before the boss is cancer inducing. It's just terrible design and if you die to this boss you have to go through two loading screens and then there's the long walk through the seventh circle of gaming hell with apparently infinite reindeer using wave tactics similar to Stalin's Russian army. Somehow, somehow this area gave me flashbacks to a war I wasn't even in. This is also the boss that they showcase to those who do not have the third DLC and let's be honest this is the worst level design in the entire series. So yeah, I mean, get people to buy it, sure! Yeah, okay, this boss is more of a letdown than Godfather 3. It's nothing more than the first boss in the DLC copy and pasted twice. Just change the colour of the fur, add in a health regen ability to make it different. This is just garbage to go up against. Seriously, is this what FromSoft wanted from the final part of the Crown Trilogy? Is this the extent of the effort they're willing to put in? This boss changed this DLC from an amazing DLC to a barely above average one. The only good thing is that you don't actually have to do this boss, but that should not be a reason for the developers to get lazy. B team, I'm looking at you. This entire experience is just frustrating, and it's about as far away from fun as you can get. Once again guys, a difficult game should not be an unfair one. They stack the deck so much against you in this section that overcoming it is nothing more than a test of patience, instead of what it should be, a test of skill. Open. And lastly, to sum up, this boss really is just a cat. Astrophy. Now, there isn't really a whole lot we can say about Skeleton Lords, it's just a fucking bad boss. It takes all the intimidation from the skeletons in Dark Souls 1 and just throws out the fucking window. The boss is dull, anticlimactic, it's just three skeletons that when you kill one, it splits into four, even easier to kill skeletons. Oh, and let's not forget the appalling attempt at bone wheel skeletons. Seriously, they could just have copied the ones from Dark Souls 1 exactly, and this boss would have at least been somewhat intimidating, maybe. The only good thing about this boss is that at the very least you can end it quickly and continue on your merry way to the next shit boss that's like fucking five minutes away from this one. Where is Neo's final form where he transforms into a massive bone wheel skeleton that even Liam Neeson wouldn't take on a 1v1, even if he stole his daughter? Again. Bosses should feel like the culmination of all your experiences and knowledge to that point, a challenge that is supposed to encourage you to play outside the standard box of get behind it and backstab it. Which you can do, by the way. If, look, if you just aren't going to put any effort into the boss design, then why fucking bother placing a boss there? The game would just have been better if it wasn't there. 
So where do we start with our number two choice? It's just rats. Nothing more. All the points and gripes we've made apparent about these previous bosses on the list stand even more bold here. Except one. If there is one thing worse than a boss becoming a standard mob later in the game, it's being a fucking mob before it even becomes a boss. So... Yeah. Also, we checked, it is the only boss in the entire history of the Souls series to have been a mob beforehand. So yeah, the design team also got so unbelievably lazy with this boss, it really makes you question how in any way this was supposed to live up to the standards of its predecessors. Not only this, the boss is optional, which is why it takes the number 2 spot and not the number 1 and leads us on to our next point, that the area it is in is also completely optional. So, much like Darkroot Gardens, if you're in this area you'll be forced into PvP battles with members of the Covenant, but once again this area is completely optional. Darkroot Gardens was not. You had to go through there to get to Sif and progress the game. All the Rat Covenant does here is protect the boss of an optional area so that players cannot kill the boss to actually join the Covenant, so this area defeats itself in every way possible. So what defeats the area more than the Covenant? The boss. You go through this area, fighting rats, over, and over, and over again, to step through the fog gate and, holy mother of fuck, MORE RATS! Except one, who has a mohawk to distinguish it from the rest. But, once again guys, this boss is only number two because the congregation exists, and you cannot skip the congregation if you want to go to the next area. Here it is guys, the most disappointing of the most disappointing in the game. So before we reveal the number one spot, we should mention that if you disagree, then this is no longer our opinion. This is absolute scientific fact that this is the number one shittiest, worst, most disappointing excuse for a boss in the entirety of the Soul series. So here we go, the golden turd of bosses. You guys know what it is. You've always known what it is. We have always all known what it is. The rats from the grave of saints. Again! Okay, we are joking. Although it almost was bad enough to take both the number one and two spot. But the real number one, Magus in the congregation. Pinwheel strikes fear into the heart of this boss with its devastating moveset and its over-the-top design. Even the title, the very name of this boss screams shitty Christian rock band. There isn't a single good thing we can say about this hemorrhoid on Lars or Dark Souls 2. Not even joking! The very mention of this boss's name turns the stomach of many a Souls fan. This boss is such a joke that you have to find a way to make it fun by handicapping yourself against it. And to add insult to injury, FromSoft to treat you like a man who lost half his head in a car crash and actually gave you a summon for this boss. And to make things even worse, this unskippable louse infested pubic hair stuck between your teeth doesn't even drop a soul to craft with, and it's also generic enemies later on in the game. So to sum up, fuck this boss, fuck B team, and fuck anyone who disagrees that this boss is the worst there is, the worst there was, and the worst there ever will be. But don't worry congregation. At least you guys were at top of the bottom. And that brings us to the end of our top 10 worst bosses in Dark Souls 2. So if you enjoyed our more scripted style of videos, then you may want to watch the Dark Souls The Grinder. So if you want to watch that, click left box. Or if you want to be taken to the playlist of all the vines that we've made for Dark Souls, then click the right box. Obviously, you know, the links are on screen. If you want to support the channel, there's a link in the description box. But remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We're, we're pretty active and, you know, we try to communicate with you guys as much as possible. Really hope you enjoyed this video because, my god, this took so, so long to make. So hopefully it's all paid off. Anyway, again, hope, hope you enjoyed that and see you in the next video, guys. Bye!